Hello, Ted Greenfield, over 50 and learning to fly. And yes, today I want to go over your commercial check ride. So the FAA has gone to a complete scenario based format. So you don't have a DPE just sitting there firing questions that you have to memorize all this stuff. What they're going to do is give you a scenario and you're going to have to tell a story incorporating all the ACS standards involved in the commercial certificate in that story. So my DPE gave me a scenario really customized almost to the kind of flying that I want to do and the kind of commercial flying I want to do. And it was quite involved. I spent about six hours preparing for the oral portion of this. And I'm going to show you how I did it right now. This makes so much sense and it is so much more enjoyable than just sitting down with the DPE and having them fire off questions and what does this reg mean and what does that reg mean and what would you do with this and what does this mean? And uh, that makes one person nervous, that makes another person crazy and it makes me insane when, uh, when you have that kind of test. But when you have someone coming across from you and just giving you a story and giving you a scenario and you have to exercise and walk through that scenario as a commercial pilot would, it's just an exercise. And you know you have everything right because you know what you're doing and you have the time to prepare for it. So what my DPE did is he gave me a scenario where I was picking up an aircraft, a Piper Malibu, and a co-pilot from Marion County in Florida, flying them down to Fort Pierce, dropping off my co-pilot, and then picking up four passengers and a dog and some dog supplies and then taking them on to Key West in a Piper Malibu, as I would in a normal commercial pilot scenario. So what he did is he gave me the scenario and there were a few hints in there. They were going and they were really excited to go on a fishing trip. But also I had weights for everything. I had the weights of each passenger. I had the weights of the dog. I had the weights of the dog supplies. I have the weights of my co-pilot. I had the weights of my co-pilot's bag. I had the weights of my bag and I had my weight. Um, we were dropping the co-pilot off in Fort Pierce and I was flying um, without a co-pilot in a Piper Malibu with the four passengers and the dog to Key West. So there were a lot of moving parts in the scenario and I could tell he put a lot of time into it because as I started to work through the, uh, the scenario, it was really, really involved. So the first thing I did was treated it just like any VFR flight. I would go ahead and do the navigation and then after I did that, then I walked through and got the POH of the Piper Malibu out and I went ahead and did the manual weight and balance for all these items. And I did the first pass, I did it just with once and then I was allowed to enter the information into ForeFlight and it came out pretty similar. So I knew I had it all right. So I went through and I just worked out all these things in general, I woke up, I worked out some issues with each leg that I would have, and I just kind of highlighted them in red here. And then I was ready to go ahead and do all of my weight and balance. As I said before, I walked through and I did all the navigation, and I did that all in four flight, what my top of climb would be, how much fuel I would burn on the climb. I, I really did this down to the last drop of fuel, and I had it all um, actually, I had it all perfectly me measured out. I did it manually first, and then I did it all in four flight just to make sure my numbers matched. And um, they came pretty, pretty close. So what I did with this is I worked out all the weights, and the Piper Malibu is a really tricky aircraft, and I didn't think it was at first. But you can't fill this plane up with fuel and fly it with two passengers. It's out of balance. And um, so for each leg of the trip, I decided to fly with minimum fuel plus my day VFR reserve, which also put me right within the CG range. So for each leg of the trip, I ran a different CG for every possible uh, weight and balance computation that, I, um, that was possible, and then I made my decision. Um, now, he had this, so I was right around the max weight and I would have to make a decision 
would the dog have to stay behind or would the dog supplies have to stay behind or would I have to fly with absolutely minimum fuel? And this was a really tricky, tricky thing. And I'm not going to tell you what I had to do, but obviously I did the, made the right choice and I passed it. So basically I ran through every possible CG equation until I got the right one. And here's one that actually came up. You can see I was overweight on that, so I couldn't do uh, I couldn't do that one. Here's another um, possibility that I had that I actually came out overweight on. So I ran through all the CGs until I got it right. And also, it matters in the Piper Malibu where these people sit. I had two couples. Um, I had a guy weighing 175 pounds, another man weighing 190 pounds. And then uh, the two female passengers were, I think, 120 and 130 pounds each. Um, so, uh, you know, so the weights were the weights were realistic. So again, I went through and did all the CGs and got the right, um, the combination of the right fuel, the right passengers, and um, I did have to leave some dog supplies behind, but that's a realistic call that you're gonna have to make. Number two, the temperatures and the humidity levels and the takeoff distances in Florida. So I went through and I know that Fort Pierce and X-35, they have long runways, but I know he wanted to see exactly how much um, runway this plane would need. So I did all my takeoff graphs um, at the right temperatures that I would be taking off at, you know, it's Florida in the early spring, so it's hot, and, it's, uh, it gets hot and humid in the afternoon. So I did all my takeoff distances and, um, and my takeoff distances for all three airports that, uh, including my alternate, can't forget that. Um, so I did that. Then we would be flying across water, not for very long. We would be flying over water for a total, I think, of eight minutes. So I just went ahead and did a glide time and distance at 8,500 feet in the Piper Malibu. And we had enough uh, altitude and time to glide to Ocean Reef if there was an emergency. And then there was a little airport on the other side. So um, I did all these computations. And then I did the takeoff distances at full weight from Fort Pierce. And then I did the takeoff distances at full weight from our alternate airport. Let's say uh, if we couldn't make it to Key West because of weather or for whatever kind of emergency that would pop up. Um, let's say we landed at our alternate. Can I get back off the ground and do I have enough space? Because the airports around Key West are really, really, really short. And this would just put me at it. So. Um, so these are the kind of things that they're going to want to see you have, um, as well as let's say if I did have to land at the alternate and I was fully loaded with passengers, um, would I have enough ground roll to actually land at that alternate? And so I did a landing ground roll for that. And, um, and then there was another um, takeoff chart that I did for flying back solo from Key West, which I knew I had enough room, but um, I just went ahead and did it. I did another um, chart for maximum climb, uh, climb performance as well. So basically what I did is um, I went ahead and told a story about the scenario. And then instead of just asking me and drilling me on questions, what he did is he gave me different scenarios. What would you do if one of the passengers actually may have had a little bit too much to drink and decides to come up in the, in the right seat and sit down with you? Or what happens if some guy refuses to put his seatbelt on? And there were those kind of uh, scenarios that you will have to uh, come into contact with and you will have to deal with as a commercial pilot. So, um, and then he asked me some other questions, but it was more of a conversation about a scenario. And that really put me at ease. And also I was really confident in my answers because I knew they were right. It gave me a whole nother level of understanding about how this Piper Malibu works. And most importantly, it gave me the decisions that, or it, it illuminated the decisions I'll have to make as a commercial pilot. In a nutshell, that's it. Um, it was, uh, I did put a lot of work into it. I did put about six hours of work into it. It took about an hour and a half to explain it. Um, and I had, obviously I had every little last detail uh, narrowed down, but um, I really enjoyed it. So this is what the FAA is doing, moving to a scenario base. I hope this helps you. It gives you an idea of what to expect. And again, 
if you're starting out in this over 50 and you've gotten your instrument rating or even if you haven't had your instrument rating yet I advise you go for your commercial it, it's not about the job or it's not about getting a job although that's a possibility it's about the accomplishment and it's about having the option and it's about expanding your mind and your possibilities at our age because I can't tell you having passed that commercial check ride and the oral um, it was it was my little Everest, if I can say that. And um, I know that joy translates well across the camera, and I know that you guys have been following me and, and understand that. So I strongly suggest, guys, go for it. It's really, it's an awesome feeling. So I hope you learned something, and I strongly suggest if you are over 50 and you want to get out and do this stuff, two words, sorry, three words, just do it.